there. Today, let's 3D print with sugar at home using cheap stuff. Uh, okay, so here's the, here's the concept. For years, I've been telling my friends that with these dirt cheap lasers you can get now, they're like 200 bucks. Uh, you can set up a quick and dirty SLS printer at home. Um, this is not a new concept. SLS printing has existed forever. It's where you have a layer of powder, you hit it with a laser, you add another layer of powder, you hit that with a laser, etc., and onward until you have a 3D object. Doing it with sugar isn't even a new concept. Uh, Evil Mad Scientist Laboratories did the Candy Fab 3000 years ago, which is this with granulated sugar and a heat gun. They built the whole 3D printer. It was awesome. That was years ago. Even doing it with a cheap laser and powdered sugar like I'm going to do isn't new. There's a group out of Italy that did it a couple years ago. Uh, but the point is, I've been thinking about this for years. I've been wanting to do it, and I have to do it to get it out of my stupid brain. So let's do it. First, let's talk about what laser I'm going to use. This is a cheap diode laser. I'm not going to use it, but I wanted to show you that I could use it. You see, this is a gantry laser, so if I use it, then i got to worry about the gantry stirring up dust. It's going to be in my way. It's going to be a pain in the ass to like get it out of the way, line it up again, get my sugar all flat, etc. But you could use this. Even better, you could get one of those like $200 laser peckers that have a galvo head, which means there's little mirrors in there doing it. There's no gantry. That would be awesome. However, I have... This. This is a fiber laser with a galvo head. It's much more expensive than a cheap uh, diode laser, but this is sugar. You can use a diode laser. It would work fine. It might even work easier than this fiber laser. We'll find out. Um, this one was about $2,500 or $3,000. They're getting cheaper. You can get them for about $2,000 now for a fiber laser. So even still, this is cheaper than like a Glowforge. Uh, but your cheap K40 would work too. The point is, Hot laser, hit sugar, it works. So how am I going to do it at home? Uh, just a little bit of a warning here for those of you who are really into building cool complex stuff, this ain't going to be that. This is going to be a, a hack, a manual effort. I'm not building a whole printer. As I said, other people have already done that. Those are things that exist. I just need to get it out of my brain that I can do it at home. So I'm going to jump into uh, Fusion 360 and design a manual bed. I decided on a three inch square work area so I could design a decently sized object if I wanted to, though I'm probably going to stick to fairly rudimentary shapes. Um, I did it as a box with a bed that lowers as you screw on a side screw here. The point being that my focal distance would never change. The top layer would always be at the same height. That's going to make my life easier working with a Galvo laser. Um, I did design it with a screw on both sides in case I needed it, but my suspicion is when I print this out, I'm not going to need the screw on both sides. A single screw will work fine. Um, so let's print it out and see. Okay, now that it's printed, I have it here. I have the screw in place, screwed in a little bit. It slides together. This is the first print and it fit together perfectly because uh, I, I left some, some pretty good slop. And it works perfectly fine. It screws, it unscrews, everything works great. The bed is a little bit tilted to one side, but honestly, once you get the sugar in there, it doesn't make a difference. I'm not going to add the second screw on this side because it's just an added complexity I don't need. I can just screw it up and down with this one side. So my point is, I'm going to put sugar in here, I'm going to blast it with the laser, I'm going to twist this a little bit to drop it down, I'm going to put more sugar, I'm going to blast it with the laser. Let's do that. Okay, you can see my super fancy setup here. Things are like taped together to kind of minimize the amount of wiggle that's going to happen. I'm going to put sugar in there and level it off. Uh, and we'll see what settings actually will bind the sugar. This should be interesting. Sugar's going to get everywhere, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely an issue with pitting here that we will have to deal with. But not right now. So let's see what we got. So this is just the default settings. 90% um, power, speed is 100. I don't know if that's a percentage. I don't know, we're just gonna see what it does. Nothing, because this is white. So let's put it on repeat and see if maybe just multiple passes of this would do something. Speed is 100 millimeters per second, max power is 90%, frequency is 25 hertz. So 
So we've got something going here. Let's see if our focal length needs adjusted. There we go. So I can see a visible square here where I filled it in, but I doubt that that's actually, oh, oh, it is solid. I cracked it, but there it is. Let's see if I can get it over to an edge here without destroying it so I can look at it with the camera. Nope, I flipped it over. It worked. So now let's experiment more. All right, let's try that some more. Let's see if this works a little better. Not really. See the lines I'm getting? That's not good. That's going to make it all very much more difficult. Okay, let's try that again. So this is what I'll do instead of instead of uh, running it across. I'll try to pack it this way, but this is going to screw with my layer thicknesses. Okay, what did we learn here? First pass worked pretty well, actually. Second pass caramelized, liquidized it. I could adjust the settings to try to get this down to a um, in-between, but honestly, I think we'll just try with the default settings, multiple layers this time, and see what it does. I, I suspect my main frustration is gonna be layer heights here. So we'll do, we'll do one pass, we'll reduce, uh, we'll drop a layer, and we'll do another pass, and we'll do that like five times and see what it does. Starting to liquefy. Maybe I should reduce power. Look at that. Let's see if I can get that off of there without destroying it. It's extremely fragile and I am extremely shaky. Okay, looking at this, we can see it's, it's got the shape, it's got decent penetration, but we can see some liquid there in the middle of the sugar actually melting. So maybe I need to reduce power a little bit. For, if, it doesn't look like it's doing much, but let me just give you an example of what we're dealing with here on power. Here, I'll, I'll use the same settings and hit a piece of metal. So maybe our power needs to drop a little bit. Okay, next day, morning coffee, playing with it some more. So it's <clears throat> clearly evident that the problem here is my laziness. You see, putting down a consistent flat packed layer of powdered sugar with this system is much more difficult than I anticipated, not because of the bed lowering, that part works just as I planned, but because the powdered sugar itself when you drag something across the surface, it doesn't, it's not smooth. It curls up and, and breaks up, um, so you have to pack it. And 
when you pack it, you're not getting a consistent layer height because you're packing different amounts on it. And you're actually breaking up that 3D print, that first layer you did under it uh, in many cases. So you're ruining your, your stuff as you go. <clears throat> now, you could resolve this by creating a motorized roller system that deposits an exact amount and rolls it flat every time. But as we established in the beginning, I'm not going to do that because I'm lazy and I just want to tinker. Uh, I am curious, though, if the fatter and, and different wavelength laser of the blue diode would make this easier in confectioner's sugar. So let's try the blue diode and just see what it does. Okay, I've got this, this blue laser set up. <clears throat> I've got the proper eye protection for this one here. Um, and it's ready to go. You can see what I mean about the... Uh, the movement being a possible issue. You can see some sugar moving there. It's not too bad. I've actually got it a little too far away from the surface there to make the beam less focused. That should help it fuse more. So let's give this a try. No effect whatsoever. <clears throat> Same settings. 85% power, 100 millimeters per second. Nothing at all. Okay, what we're seeing is that the uh, lasers are really struggling with the white powder. The fiber laser works fine, more or less, but the blue laser um, Boy, it didn't do anything. Full power, 10 millimeters per second, didn't affect it at all, which kind of surprised me. I thought the blue laser would do it. Um, I have nothing else going on in this pointless video, so why don't we try some cocoa powder that will absorb the uh, laser a little bit better, and we'll look at my funny hair while we do it. I'm in my pajamas still, by the way. The cocoa powder could stand to be sifted, but let's just see if it absorbs the light better. It's burning. It's not melting, it's burning. Which I didn't think about with cocoa powder, it's not going to melt because it's not sugar. What am I even doing? It's just going to burn, like cinnamon wood, right? I'm not even going to put out this video. This is dumb. Yeah, what was I thinking? Cocoa powder won't, won't 3D print. It's just going to burn. I went and looked in my pantry and I have hot cocoa mix, which is mostly sugar. That's the first ingredient. So we're going to try that because it's brown and it actually flows really well as a powder. Like you can just scrape off the top layer. So let's turn the power down even more and give this a try. All right, let's stop it and just see what we're dealing with here. I can smell it for sure. It's really hard to tell with these glasses on. Well, that would actually work if it'll fuse. We fused a layer, a single layer. What we need is we need low power, high speed from this diode laser. I'm going to put it at like 15% power at the highest speed it can go to, and we're going to see what it does. We were cooking it, but not fusing it. It's 
So we have to go even slower because that's about full power, which makes this kind of pointless. That's at like 10% power. So it is still burning the cocoa, but it's not smoking as much and it is fusing the sugar. So I guess let's try to make a shape. Let's make a shape. We'll do five layers. We'll try. This is 80 millimeters per second at 35% power on this laser, which I don't remember what it is. I'll figure it out. I'll put it in the description. Maybe like a 15 watt or something, 10 watt. A little smoky, might be too high power. Let's pop this bad boy up. This is four layers. I don't know where my tweezers went. There they are. Look at that. There it is. I mean, it's, it's functional. The hot cocoa octagon, or uh, hexagon, I mean. It's actually, um, more rigid than the other ones. Oh, the layers are coming apart, I think. You know what? I have to eat it. That's going to be disgusting, but I have to eat it. All right. I got to eat this sucker. It's, it's, uh, it's burnt. I mean, it's burnt, but... Tastes burnt. Tastes like burnt cocoa. Big surprise there. It worked though, that's cool. Okay, what did I learn? I'm gonna call this a success. Uh, but the fact is I didn't learn anything, really. I mean, we knew this works. We've seen other people do it. These printers exist. Other people have actually built the printers. I did learn some things personally. Um, powdered sugar is really hard to lay down in a consistent layer, unless you have some sort of automation that'll roll it at, a, at an exact amount, uh, because it wants to curl up and, and be pulled by the tension of the spreader. Cocoa works, of course, because it absorbs the light better. It's dark, it absorbs the light, so it works better, but it tastes burnt as crap, but it also spreads really well. So you could probably, with some refinement on power, print some stuff in cocoa powder at home pretty easily um, with a, a homemade machine, but you'd have to get the power right. You know, uh, and then also you want to get a Galvo-based laser, not a gantry laser. I was running at roughly two minutes per layer. So this would take, you know, if you had 100 layers, that's 200 minutes. It's, you know, over two hours, two and a half hours, right? Um, trying to print something that's only 100 layers. Uh, so you want a Galvo-based laser, but not necessarily a fiber laser, because that point was too small and too sensitive to the light differences. Uh, unless you could get like a real high power Galvo laser. This one's only 20 watt. Um, so really, a dirt cheap diode laser might be the perfect laser. Um, so, thanks for goofing around with me in the shop. I gotta clean up this mess, but I, I feel like I successfully 3D printed a shape using a manual Z-bed and a cheap ass laser. So, in sugar. So I'm gonna call this a success. There's a lot of ups and downs in there. Alright, I'll see you next time.